Welcome to Weir's Dojang and another Tuesday training tip. I'm instructor Weir and today we're going to talk about flow. Flow is a very important topic in Hapkido. Uh, there are some in the community who have talked about not flowing from technique to technique to be able to just use that one lock and lock a person down. Great in theory, but when you become in a dynamic environment, there's an infinite number of variables. The way to mitigate those variables is to understand the flow. There's a couple of different scenarios where flow is going to come into play. You could be putting a person into a lock and realize that that lock is not affecting them for whatever reason. They could be on drugs and their pain receptors aren't reacting. They could just have really flexible wrists and you go to put them in that goose and it's doing nothing. You can't just sit there and wait. You have to be able to go directly into something else. That's where understanding flow comes into play. There's also situations where you start a technique and you realize that you might have to change that technique because of environmental issues. Their buddy comes in. Um, you're, you're bumping up against a wall. You have to move someone in, the, in a certain way. And those things that are, are all things that could happen in the middle of the technique that you have to change. And understanding flow is going to allow you to do that. Let's take, a couple look, let's take a look at a couple of different flow drills that we can use, as well as those situational things where we can go from one lock to another. All right, let's take a look at a couple of different techniques here where we're going to deal with uh, a couple of different environmental issues. First off, we're going to deal with an arm bar. Well, we're going to have that, you know, we're going to start coming into that arm bar and he's not really moving right. Okay, I don't quite have it. He's really strong. If I keep pushing and pushing and pushing, it's going to do me no good. And he's going to ultimately be able to counter it. What do we know happens with an arm bar? We always have another technique that's right there waiting for us, which is bone stand. So if I'm pushing down and I can't get him to go, I can easily go to the bone stand and then right back in the arm bar and lock him up right down to the floor. This is a fantastic way of going from one technique to another. It really lends itself to play back and forth between those techniques. Remember, every time you have an arm bar, you have a bone stand and vice versa. So now let's talk about a different situation where um, he grabs on, I'm going into that arm bar, and then realize, wait a minute, his buddy's coming in, and now if I just go here, I'm gonna leave myself exposed. So instead of that, I'm going to come up here, go for that arm bar, oh, nope. We're gonna go into hammer lock instead. Okay, now I can use him as a shield. So that case where the environment changed from when I started the technique to where I ended the technique, and understanding how to be able to, that's my arm bar, that's my hammer lock. How do I transition between the two of them? Here, here, here. Okay, so understanding how to go from one technique to another is very, very important. One of the drills I have my guys do is after we've worked a set of techniques, I tell them, okay, I want to see you go from technique one to technique five, and to have them figure out how to flow from one to the other. Okay, so those are a couple of different ways of, you know, environment changes, middle of the technique, something's not working, you flow to something else. So we talked about environmental things changing your techniques and making you flow into other techniques. The best way to understand flow is to be able to drill it. And here we have a couple of different flow drills that we use. And I'm going to show you a segment of each of these. Okay, This first one's actually a 20 point flow drill. We actually have 20 different locks. Each one of them could end the situation, but we're going to continue to flow from lock to lock to lock to make sure that we can move around. Ultimately, it'll look like a dance. So this is a segment of the, the first segment of it. We're going to start from the handshake, we're going to lock into a thumb, this out turn, elbow lock, lock, arm bar, and we'll reverse goose, pull around, wrist out turn. Okay. So as you can see, we can work that flow. So we can just go into it here, 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 around, down, and then Mike does it. Down, turn, good. Arm bar, goose, pull around, and wrist out, turn. Excellent. And that way we can both work back and forth and work this flow and make sure that we are both understanding how to transition from lock to lock. What you can't feel is the fact that each one of those things, we don't actually release the lock to get to the next one. We maintain the lock to get to the next one. The next drill that we do is going to work both sides of the body. So we're going to start out with a wrist out turn. We're going to come up, come around, reverse goose. Now I want to get to the other side of the body, so I'm going to fling him around 
And see how his hand comes up? Perfect. We're going to go to this side. Here. And go from there. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to be able to pop from side to side and maintain flow and keep going back and forth. I do it a few times, he does it a few times, and then we go from there. It's always important to be able to practice these flow drills and have both people be able to flow from technique to technique. So the last driller technique we're going to talk about is being able to take a person where we've already walked them into, onto the ground. We've already had them in a good point of submission, but maybe we have to escort them out. Okay, maybe there is a situation where we need to get them out of the room and we don't want to actually just release them because they're still posing a threat. So a perfect example of this is, you know, the punch comes in, you go into that arm bar, you turn it around, you go into that big floor, you lock them up nice and tight. Now, we're going to roll them towards belly and we're going to come around to the other side. Note, I didn't lose the lock. Now, I'm going to reverse goose, pick them up, Sort them out of the room. Okay, that being able to go from lock to lock to lock, make him submit, and then pick him up and escort him out can be very, very handy, can be very, very useful. The same type of situation can happen where you're dealing with a person that's being cuffed, you get them to the point of, of being on the ground, and then being able to manipulate them to get them up and then escort them out. These are all different techniques we can use. There's a whole bunch of them, but this is just a role sample. All right, so we saw some flow drills. We saw some situational areas where we had to flow from technique to technique. We are just grazing the top of this. We're touching tip of the iceberg type of stuff here. There's so many more that we can do. If you'd like to see some more, if you'd like to have some drills uh, for your school, please feel free to reach out to me. I can throw them together in the video and or uh, a text and, and send them along to you for your students to practice as well. Remember, train hard, be good to each other, and have key.